Hi, Beans. Sorry, I was just doing a last minute little getting ready thing. I thought I tried to add something on Instagram, but it's not popping up. I don't want to overload it. Okay. Oh no, you don't have any paper. Can you tell me, is there an echo or anything in the audio? Because on my end, there's an echo and it's a little distracting for me. <laughs> Olivia. Okay, well, I got some good ideas for, um, sorry, there's an echo, it's so distracting. I got some suggestions on what to do for a live stream, and some people, one person said to draw my subscribers' profile pictures, which I think could be fun. I actually might do that for a video in the future. And then um, it was actually the Art Rat and Slope Boy who suggested drawing animals. So I might try to draw those animals. I have never drawn a rat or a sloth before, so this should be interesting. the same eraser. I need to fix the exposure because I'm looking as pale as the paper right now. That's a little better. Okay. Start out with the basic shape of the body.
going to change my profile picture to a person before you do drawing our profile pictures. Yeah, I just recently went through um, my list of people who are subscribed to me and picked out some. And I did mainly pick ones that had, you know, it was obviously a person or, you know, a humanoid. Very, sorry, there's an echo. It's so distracting. Um, you know, so like Melon Doodle, her profile picture is a very straightforward, good shot of a character that I guess is supposed to be her or just that she's drawn. It doesn't have to be like a straightforward angle or anything, but just something that I can take. And I actually picked more of like really cartoony styles or less realistic than what I do because whenever I redraw them, I'll most likely redraw them in a more realistic way or at least semi-realistic. So I want it to be a little bit different than what my style looks like. So there's quite a few that were really good. But yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people do those drawing their subscribers profile pictures and I thought it was such a fun idea. I'm more used to drawing people, so make sure you go easy on me with this. Oh, nice little toy. Welcome. I'm gonna be drawing a sloth next, I think. You're welcome. Thank you for suggesting it. I was just telling them that I think I'll be doing a the drawing my subscribers profile pictures for an actual video here pretty soon. I'm not sure how many I want to do per video. I guess it depends on how realistic I go and what medium I use. I don't know if I'll use markers or paints yet. I've been having a lot of fun practicing portraits with watercolor. I have never drawn a sloth. I also thought about working on some of my entries for some art contests I'm going to be joining. Um, I don't have my notebook out, but there's one where the, oh, actually, let me just get my notebook. I want to see if any of you guys are doing these. Where did I put my notebook? Check out this notebook. <laughs> Like it's, uh, it's got a pineapple. That's the only reason I bought it. There's a pineapple in it. Okay, so um, Imagination in a Pencil, I think is the channel name. She's hosting an art contest that goes until June 1st. And the prompt is Nature. And this is what I have so far. She's going to be like, there's going to be like vines coming down right here. Where she's like peeking through some vines. Um... But right now it just looks kind of weird because she just got her hands up and there's nothing there. But there will be vines that she's opening up, like a curtain or something. And I've been doing this in watercolor and I really like how that one's turning out. And then 
uh, Nicolina, Drawing with Nicolina's hosting one with the thing of dream. And then Artsy Caboodle is hosting one with the theme of water. And I want to try to do both of those as well. I really like art contests. They're fun. Well, thank you. sloth cow that says drop it like a sloth that's hilarious i love that <laughs> that's so cute alika elika is it Elika? I don't think I've heard of that name. There's so many art contests going on ever since I've clicked on, actually ever since I've had my art contest for my 500 subscribers, I've been getting recommended like all these new art channels that I've never heard of before that are hosting these contests. And it's really neat, but at the same time, it's like these might, this might be too many. <laughs> I don't know how many, I, I wanna enter them all, but I just don't have time. I'm hosting a DTIYS just because I want something to get, I want to get, sorry I can't read, <laughs> because I want to get into it and get used to hosting something for if I grow and we'll be hosting more contests. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be hosting one as soon as I hit a thousand, which, you know, might be a while because the sub growth has been kind of slow lately. Um, but I almost thought about just hosting one anyway and maybe just having like a regular one you know, with small prizes or collaborations or whatever, just kind of monthly. But there's always so many contests going on at any one time. I don't want to put one out there and then not very many people join it because they're already, you know, busy with so many other ones because there are so many. I try to join as many as I can, though. Pencil doesn't have an eraser on the back of it. Well, hi, Dean. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I started using Canva. I was making thumbnails just with Procreate, but then uh, I think it was like Annie Dubay's video said that she recommends Canva for thumbnails and it is just so much easier. And I can just do it right on the computer and it's already saved. I don't have to transfer it from my iPad to my computer. So I have a really hard time making them look aesthetic, like making them look really clickable, like you want to click on. It's definitely an art in itself. I think this rat needs to be a little thicker. It might be too thick. Yeah, Canva is really great for thumbnails. Hmm, I just look wrong. The face. Pixar, you know, I've heard of that, but I've never actually tried that.
ADC thumbnails is something I'm not too good at. I'm not the most creative with them, which is quite ironic coming from a fellow artist. I honestly feel the same way. I feel like I put so much effort into the art in the video, then it's kind of like a pain in the butt to then have to try to make a thumbnail that will entice people to click on my video. <laughs> I just want to make my thumbnail. This is a really good video. You should just watch it. Don't worry about the thumbnail. And that would be the title <laughs> and also on the thumbnail. Obviously, that wouldn't work. Well, it can be frustrating sometimes. And then my son also has a channel. And he's only, he's just about to turn eight. So, obviously, I run it for him. But he just does, like, Minecraft gaming videos on it and some computer games. But I also have to edit his videos because he wants them to have all the fun, crazy edits. And of course, I made his intro, and he's always, every time he sees me on live stream, he'll run up and say, don't forget to go subscribe to The Great Gamer. <laughs> it's hard enough doing one channel, making thumbnails for one video. Now i got to do it for two channels. Jeans out, I'd always wish I could have a cohesive color scheme. Oh, I know. You know, I watched um what's I think it's like Oh my goodness, I can't. She's a she's a blind art YouTuber. Diana, maybe. But she does like channel reviews every once in a while, and I've seen that her one of her biggest um pieces of advice is for your thumbnails to try to make them all like cohesive and go together. That way, when somebody goes to look at your channel page, they're like, oh, wow, this looks professional, and they're more likely to subscribe, which at the time, I was like, I don't really like that because a lot of times, my different, the different art that I make has different color schemes in the artwork, and I like to make my thumbnails based on the color scheme of whatever my art is. Like, uh, I think with my Draw This In Your Style, entry that I made for Ella Blue Creates. She had that character named Violet that had that rainbow shirt on and I made my thumbnail have like a rainbow background to kind of go with it. Um, but you know obviously not every single one of my thumbnails is going to have a rainbow color scheme so it's kind of one in, on its own but I don't know. I'm trying to make more cohesive thumbnails. Uh, my son's channel is called The Great Gamer, but there's like 500 channels also called The Great Gamer, but that's what he wanted to be called. But his, um, let me see if I can, I'll show you what his profile picture looks like because I made it for him. And I used Procreate to make his little intro animation. And he only has 13 subscribers right now. Let me see that. That's his channel. Great gamer. So it's like, uh, I tried to make it like, you know, whenever the screen goes with those colors and there's that loud beep, like there's no service or something. That's kind of like the background. And then the picture is the outline of him holding a controller. <laughs> but yeah. A great gamer. He's only got 13 subscribers right now. I suppose it all depends on what you like, but sometimes it comes down to what is best for your channel. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing. It's like, I guess if you really don't care about gaining subscribers and you're just making content for the sake of making content, then it doesn't matter. And in a way, that's how I feel because I'm not really, I'm not doing YouTube to try to make a living because I don't really need to. Like, we're just fine without me trying to make money off of YouTube. Obviously, that would be a bonus if I could make money off of YouTube because then I could justify all the art supplies I buy to my husband and be like, oh, I'm making my own money with my art so I can buy more stuff for my art. But, you know, it. I mean, I guess it, I can understand the appeal of having... A cohesive 
looking page. I guess it does make sense. And if it does entice more people to want to watch my videos with all the effort I'm putting into them anyway, I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal to just make them look similar. There's too many great gamers. I know. I told him. I was like, can you pick a different name? There's so many. But he's like, no, I am the great gamer. All right, let's finish this lap. I don't know. Do I have it linked in my channel? How do I do that? How do I feature channels? And I can put him on my channel. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, this is definitely going to be more of a, uh, a derpy looking rat than a realistic looking rat, but that's okay. Let's see. Does anyone know how to add channels, like feature channels? Oh, actually, um, I think I'm subscribed to him. So if you go to my channel and then click on channels to see all who I'm subscribed to. I mean, you don't have to, obviously. I'm not asking you guys to go subscribe to my eight-year-old Minecraft channel. <laughs> but if you did want to look at it, I'm pretty sure it should be under, yeah. It's, it's a little ways down. You have to scroll a couple of times, but he's down there under my subscribe list. He's on there. Is it hot where any of you guys are? Because it is so hot here right now. I'm in Missouri. Thanks, Beans. I'll make sure to tell him. I actually have a little desk fan. Tell me if this is too loud. Is that super loud on the microphone? Can you hear that fan? Because if it's too loud, I'll turn it off. I don't think he had this eye placement right. It's 71 degrees in California. That's not too bad. I'm not sure actually what the temperature is here, but we're going to be going to the river tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> actually, right now, I actually talked my husband into taking my two kids out to go find a good river spot. They're going to go scout some spots for us so we can go tomorrow and my youngest son is four and he loves throwing rocks in water. It's like his favorite thing to do. So he's going to have a blast throwing rocks into the river. That's going to be so much fun. Beans, look at my profile picture. I can't really see it very well right now because it's so small. Um, wait, can I open image and new tab? It's so small. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Can I zoom? Do you have like a... It's so small and when I try to zoom it in, it's... Um, 
really blurry. Do you have like a macaron behind your head or something? It's like a character with some worn sunglasses and a giant cookie behind their head. Okay, as long as I can tell what it is, it should be okay because I just went through and saved a bunch of different profile pictures to my computer. And I'll be making them, you know, they're not going to look exactly the same anyway. I'm going to try to stick to the color scheme and any kind of accessories and stuff. I think that'll be fun. I'm starting to start doing some detail on this. I wonder if I can move my fan further away from the microphone because I feel self-conscious about it now. see it a little bit better now I'll have to open it up um, later whenever I go through my list again draw little tiny rat fingers rats probably don't have four fingers do they do they have like three fingers or do rats have four fingers collaborations open currently uh yeah i guess technically they are i've got one coming up with marshmallow diy and then after that one i think i have one coming up with isabel illustrates but other than that i don't have any um set up yet you can email me in my uh, actually i don't even know if it's in my description of my video but i know on here let me put it in there real quick Okay, I think it's in there. Yeah, I put my email in the description. Okay. So yeah, I'm open to doing collaborations. I didn't leave much room for the sloth. I don't be peeking up over here on this corner. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> okay, beans. There you go. Does that work? Alright, so for now, uh, Sloth Boy is a moderator because he was one of the ones who suggested this video. 
I'm not sure if the art rad is still here or not, but I'm going to go ahead and make them a moderator as well because they also suggested animals, so. Welcome. I know that uh, Natty sometimes, she'll like switch up her moderators every once in a while, so I might do that too. I don't really know what moderators do. <laughs> I'm still fairly new to this live streaming thing. I don't really know how everything works, but I mean, it's a fun little thing, I guess. With great power comes great responsibility, so don't take this lightly. <laughs> okay. mods just have blue text and are able to delete some comments from the live chat. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Keep everybody in line. Gonna take a while to fill this thing in. Cousin has pet rats. That's cool. I know, um, they're actually a pretty popular pet. And they're supposed to be really smart, too. Just gonna fill it in, and then we'll start building up the shadows.
I'll be right back. Okay, I'm having some weird internet connection issues. I hope nothing <laughs> disconnects. had a pet rat but whenever I was younger my brother had a pet snake it was like a ball python I think and we used to have to feed it mice but I guess after a while the mice weren't enough so we had to start buying rats for it um, but before that happened there was one time that we bought a mouse to feed it and it didn't eat it I guess if they don't eat it within a certain amount of time they never will I don't know if that's true, but I remember being told that <laughs> as a child. So it, the snake never ate the mouse. It was a little white albino mouse. So we ended up just keeping it and naming it Buster. And it started getting really sick. Like it got a lump in its neck and we just assumed it was a tumor. And my parents weren't really like, <laughs> they didn't know a lot about animals or really have it just wasn't a good situation so we just ended up letting buster go in the woods thinking that he was going to live the rest of his life happily in the wild but <laughs> i don't know if that was a good idea or not but but yeah that was our experience with a mouse having a mouse but then after that the snake would only eat rats it wouldn't eat mice anymore so the only rats were ever in my house were to be fed to our snake Not a very glamorous life. Yeah, I don't know how. We used to hold it and everything and like put it around our necks and it never bit anybody. But thinking about it now, like just earlier, um, actually I think it was yesterday, my husband and my kids were out in the backyard and I guess my youngest son ran up on a black snake or a king snake or something and... <laughs> almost stepped on it and they're just out there taking pictures of it like ugh. no thank you I know Lavender Town owns a couple of rats. She has some pet rats. They're pretty cute.
have a favorite color combination? Oh, man. Favorite color combination. Well, I can't really pick a favorite color. But certain color combinations I do like together are, like, pink and blue. I think it can be really pretty, kind of like a cotton candy color scheme. But I also really like purples with yellow. Um, it's really hard to pick. But I also really like monochromatic art where it's like just one color but different shades of it. I think that can look really cool. So kind of like pencil drawings, I guess. I guess that's what a, a graphite drawing would be. It's all in gray, like gray scale. But I think it can still look really cool. Pink and blue looks really nice. Shade this in, I guess. Mm -hmm. Denim mermaid with only the color pink except for the skin, and now it's my favorite drawing I've ever done. Oh, that sounds cool. I didn't draw any mermaids this year, and I probably still won't. <laughs> I did mermaid last year, and it about ruined me. It was so much work. But I've really been enjoying seeing all the different mermaids everybody else draws. Christina May Art. I don't know if uh, you have Instagram or who you follow on Instagram, but Christina May Art has been drawing some amazing mermaids. On Instagram, so you should check her out. Do like some really cool scenes. you're not allowed to have Instagram? Is it because you're too young or how old are you?
might be able to have Instagram, but I don't want to get addicted to it like I am YouTube. Yeah, that's one of those things. It's like, you will go on it for a few minutes to watch something to kill some time, and then the next thing you know, so much time has passed. And I was like, oh no. I'm on YouTube pretty much 24-7. I mean, I still obviously have things that I have to do, but... I like to watch things that I actually don't have to watch physically. I can just have my headphones in. I have like wireless earbuds and then I can just like go around the house doing my chores while listening. So kind of like podcasts, I guess, but it's mostly YouTube videos where they're either telling a story or they're describing how they do something. So I really only have to listen and I don't necessarily have to watch. I think this rat is looking much better now that it's got some fur filled in. <laughs> I do want to lighten the tail up just a little bit though. Celia. Hello, hello. You know, I thought I'd try a later stream because I thought maybe people wouldn't be doing as much in the evening time on the weekend, but I'm sure people are still busy. That's okay. Trying out different times anyway. Well, right now I'm trying to finish up this rat, and then afterwards I'm going to try to dry a sloth, which should be fun. Are you drawing anything or working on anything at the moment? p.m. there. Yeah, it's almost 6 p.m. here. This is D&D &D stuff. I've never really been into D&D, &D, but I've been seeing a lot of uh, stuff popping up on my YouTube about it recently. So that's cool. I've been thinking about drawing some Sonic stuff because my son Bentley really likes Sonic. I think he said Silver is his favorite character. I was never really into Sonic as a kid. I was more of a Pokemon nerd. <laughs> but one watercolor channel I watched drew um, some Sonic characters in her own style. She has like a really anime style, so they were more people-like. And my son didn't really like that, so I asked if he would like if I drew some Sonic characters. And he said he would. He's going to give me a list. We're thinking about drawing some like of the good characters going up against some of the bad characters. I also want to try to redraw one of the first, let's see, is it in here somewhere? I got some Pokemon drawings in here that I did a long time ago, like this one. I can fit it all in here. I probably won't redraw that one, but I still do like to look back at it. That one, and then, let's see, that's another one. Pretty 
sure it was in this notebook. Oh yeah, here it is. Can you hardly see it all? I think there's some, I think there might be more evolutions than what I've got here now, if I'm thinking correctly. Maybe not. Hmm. But yeah, I think I did this in 2017. So it's been a while. I think I could probably make them look better. You can see how scratchy the colored pencils look because I didn't really blend them very well. <laughs> See, this looks kind of funny here. It's like poor Sylveon doesn't even know what's coming with these two coming right at him. I think out of all of these ones, I like the way that Glaceon turned out the best. But the colors are still really dull and I feel like I could do a lot better. I might even do like a watercolor painting or a marker drawing. I'm not sure yet. Let me find what page I was on. So many blank pages, how can I not find it? There it is. Hmm, so I try to bump up this shading. like this shadow right here kind of accentuates its little fat roll. have to go to your brother's baseball game okay that's fine have fun with that that sounds like fun too yeah I'll put a time stamp in the description once I'm done so that you can go ahead and skip to the sloth so you don't have to look for it or wait for it See you guys later. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Welcome.
Okay. Sloth now. Took me one hour to draw that. <laughs> back. Jeans and beans. It's so funny you guys said that at the same time. Just starting to work on the sloth now. The rat turned out pretty good. It's kind of hard to see real the detail because the graphite is so shiny. You're doing yard work all day and came to watch during your break? Oh, that's nice. I can't imagine doing yard work right now. It's so hot. I don't even know how hot it is, actually, but I know I got my desk fan going, and it feels amazing. <laughs> as soon as I turn it off, it gets super stuffy. I can't wait till tomorrow. We're going to go to the river.
surviving a bird bath in your backyard. We haven't touched it in years and it feels good to start fixing it up. Oh, that's neat. I love bird baths. My husband is really vigilant about feeding the birds and having like corn out in the yard for the squirrel and the deer and the possum and the raccoons. We always have, usually only at night. Uh, the squirrels are all over the place all the time, but usually only at night we get like, sometimes we'll get a raccoon come up on our porch or like a raccoon family or a possum family. And then there will be like a big mass of deer out in the yard. You can see their footprints all over the ground the next day. But my husband has, uh, it's like a plastic trash can on our back porch that he puts the big bags of feed in, like the bird seed and the bags of corn. And the squirrels have chewed a hole through the bottom of the can to get to the corn. And they also somehow knocked the lid off of the top of the can. But there's corn spilt out all over our porch coming out of the hole in the bottom of the can. It's so funny. He's like, that's what, that's what they do when he forgets to feed them. He'll have it, you know, swept up, put back in the can. And then the next day, if he's forgotten to feed them or put corn out, there'll be corn spread all over the porch. Squirrels have some unexplainable skills. Yes, they do. I saw, oh man, I saw the funniest video on, I don't know if it was in, Instagram or TikTok, but, you know, they make certain bird feeders to be quote-unquote squirrel-proof so the squirrels can't eat all of the bird seed. And one of the mechanisms that they have built into the bird feeder is if a squirrel hangs on the little perch mount, it will start spinning. I guess the weight will cause it to start spinning. And there's this one video of a squirrel being spun around, like it's holding on to the bird feeder, the bottom part, with its bot, like its back feet. And it's just swinging around, and it's got a chandelier by Sia playing in the background. Oh man, it's just the funniest thing. <laughs> it's like a slow motion spin of the squirrel with that song playing. I was like, oh, that's too good. here. Oh, yes, I've seen that Mark Rober video. My son watches that video at least once a week. And I think he actually uploaded a 2.0 to that video, like a, like a sequel, I guess, to it. Another thing of a squirrel maze or something for his backyard. But that video was so funny. Yeah, I really liked that video. My son really liked it, too. Mark Rober just is like a really good content creator altogether. I like how, you know, you can really learn something from his videos. That's what we try to look for for our, you know, our kids to watch because we're pretty 
I wouldn't say we're super strict, but there are definitely certain things that we don't let our kids watch. So anything that has profanity or, you know, violence, you know, like, there's just certain things that we don't really want them watching and consuming media-wise. So Mark Rober is really nice because not only is it educational, but he's also really entertaining and it's clean. Like, it's nice, nice and clean actual family content. That's something that's really hard to find these days. Texas, and he just does like these random fun videos that, you know, are obviously are entertaining for kids and maybe some adults too. And on his own, it's not that bad, but there's certain videos that he does where whenever he gets together with his friends, I notice that's the trend. Whenever these people get together with other people and make videos, there's usually, you know, some not so great language used in the video. And that's fine, you know, if, if they want to do that, that's fine. But then I feel bad for my son because, like, well, you know, now I can't really let you watch their videos because we don't know if they're going to say something inappropriate. So, but I mean, you know, everyone makes their own decisions and what they want to do. But, you know, try to tell my son, people are going to say what they want to say, but... All we can do is do our best to try to stick with appropriate content. You know, what's appropriate for our family. I guess I could finish drawing in the shape of his head. <laughs> he doesn't really have any. I'm starting to shade him. I haven't even finished drawing the actual sloth yet. What am I doing? I'm getting too excited and jumping the gun. Get a step closer where I can watch it.
you're probably already gone by now, but okay, Jean. <laughs> I'll see you when you get back. Sorry, I didn't look at the message till just now. Need to pay more attention.
Welcome back, Jean. Pressing so hard, I gotta be denting this paper. Oh yeah, that's so dented. Get it all the way back here. Sorry, I'm not more exciting. <laughs> you look awfully lonely in the chat box. That's okay though, I appreciate my one viewer. And four likes, hey. I wonder if the morning time is better for people. Well, early afternoon, I guess. I guess 11 a.m. is not necessarily morning. Any time is good for you. Yeah, pretty much me too. I mean, I do homeschooling throughout the week, during the weekday. The biggest thing for me is that because we have satellite internet, well, thank you. Since we have satellite internet, I can't really do it if it's too cloudy because that can mess up my reception. And also, the more people that are using the internet in my house at the same time, the slower the entire the internet for everybody is and so I really have to have a time where I can tell everyone else to get off of the internet which includes my husband and my two kids who all obviously like to do things on the internet so it, it takes some coaxing to try to get my husband to take the kids and do something with them that they're distracted to the point where they don't need to get on the internet and so I can have it all to myself and that's kind of difficult sometimes but I figured I'd just try out some different times. I mean, it seems like the majority of the people who actually come to my streams, I mean, I don't want to say I think they're younger, but I know that most of them that at least comment say, like, they're in school when I do my premieres or they're having to do something, their parents are making them do something, so I guess I'm just assuming they're a bit on the younger side, but... I'm 31, so I don't really have anyone telling me what to do. I can pretty much <laughs> do it any time, day or night. doing it early in the morning would be kind of like getting it out of the way but I'm sure well there, I mean there was one I think the very first time I live streamed I did it at 11 or maybe the second time I did it at 11 a.m. and somebody had said they just woke up which I mean I sleep in until 11 sometimes so I'm thinking maybe that is a little bit too early but then I don't know how late is too late because some people are having dinner some people are like slow forward going to baseball games so I guess it's just different for everyone. I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to drawing fur either, so bear with me.
Yeah, that's true. And they didn't draw any uh, fur on the rat. I mean, I like shaded it and everything, but I didn't draw any individual fur hairs or anything. And I'm probably not going to. <laughs> No thanks. I still gotta figure out what I'm gonna make for dinner. He's doing great without them, yeah. He's alright over there. That's one thing I love about graphite is just so much of it can go so far. I really appreciate all the different things you draw. I need to start experimenting with all sorts of animals. I definitely want to start drawing buildings and sitting sit cities. I think that would be cool. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like it's not that I don't enjoy drawing different things. I do. Like, I've done a couple of different landscape paintings. Like, this is my husband's favorite thing that I've made. I used acrylics and it was for an art contest that the theme was winter and I used um <laughs> I'm sure I'd smudge it that's for sure well you're supposed to smudge it <laughs> that's the best part but this is uh, acrylic like purple winter forest painting 
This is the kind of stuff my husband likes, is like landscapes and animals and stuff, but I do enjoy making stuff like that, like landscapes and animals, but it's, it's almost like I feel more accomplished when I can successfully draw a person, because I feel like they're, it's not that they're more difficult, I mean they might be to some people, to me they are, maybe that's why I feel like I'm more, I feel more accomplished when I draw a person's face <laughs> and I'm happy with it. Um, let me see if I can find, uh, hey kitty. Like, I was working on, I wanted to, I was going to draw a bald person, um, because I really wanted to focus on working with watercolors and skin tones and, like, variations, and, uh, I can't think of her name. I think she might be, um, I think she might be Vietnamese, like, it's a Vietnamese watercolor artist, um, her, her channel's name is, like, Huta, Huta something, H-U-T-A, I, I don't want to mispronounce it, but she does these amazing watercolor paintings, and I was trying to use some of the techniques I saw from her videos. She does much more anime style. Uh, she calls it semi-realistic. I would say her drawing of humans is all semi-realistic, except the face really like her nose is her she draws her nose is really anime and her eyes are but her painting technique the way she shades things is more on the semi-realistic style and that's what i want to learn how to do better and so i was practicing with some different skin tones and this one kind of looks more like a cone head so ignore that but i really like the way this one turned out the most and this one's not bad i feel like there's you can easily see the color variation in the middle one but then also the way that she is able to blend the the rosiness of the face and the way she gets lips done. It's just, I really recommend her channel if you like watercolor stuff. Um, Huta, I can't think of, I feel so silly now, what is her channel name? super awesome artist and she doesn't talk throughout her videos um for most of them and what's so crazy about her videos is that she does have some sketching videos where she just draws you know she sketches out her characters or whatever does like um graphite drawings but when she does watercolor paintings I'm sorry there's still an echo and so I can hear myself talking and it messes me up but when she does watercolor paintings she doesn't do sketching at all and it like blows my mind she goes straight in with this I think it's like a calligraphy brush but she just draws her line art out perfectly she'll start with like the hair and then do the hairline and then she'll draw a hand down in the bottom like section of the paper doing like holding something or some kind of hand pose and then she'll just work her way from the hand back up to the face and do the facial features and it's just it's absolutely incredible it's just like she, you can tell that she's been doing it for a really really long time <laughs> let me see if i can find oh here it is i'll type it in huda chan huda chan I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's the name of her channel. I've put it in the chat <laughs> if you're so interested in watching a, a really amazing watercolor artist. I can never do it either. I can barely sketch out <laughs> anything with using an eraser. Like she just doesn't even use an eraser and it blows my mind. Really incredible. kind of what I aspire to be.
think I'm just getting lazy with the fur part now. I didn't even shade this arm in at all. I think what's so great, my favorite thing about graphite pencils is that they're just so reversible. Did you do any sports when you were younger or are you interested in any currently? Um, if playing on the junior varsity softball team counts, even though we never had any junior varsity games, then yeah, I played softball in high school. But our school is so small, I'm pretty sure we were like one of only two towns in our area that actually had a JV team. So we only ever got to play against one school, but we always had to watch the varsity girls play and always had to participate in every single practice, but we never got to hardly play any games. But as far as sports now, my husband is really into golf and he bought me my own golf set so that I would hopefully get into it. And I do enjoy going with them every once in a while. We really like uh, pickleball. I know there's a lot of people that have never heard of it, but it's actually a sport that we played in high school in gym class. It's just like, it's basically like table tennis on a, a tennis court. So like ping pong on a tennis court, but a smaller tennis court. 
with like wooden paddles and a wiffle ball. And it's super fun. And me and my husband are actually planning on pouring our own concrete pad out in our yard eventually. So we can have our own pickleball court. It's really, really fun. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, we really like... We play frisbee in the yard with our kids. But as far as like organized sports, we don't really... We don't really participate in those. Are you into any kind of sports? And how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? You don't have to answer. I'm always curious about the age ranges of people that watch my videos because my analytics say that I have people watching from 13 years old all the way up to over 65. So I have like a small percentage in every single age slot that YouTube shows on their analytics. I'm always curious. always really loved playing softball when I was younger. Softball was the game that I found out that even though I'm left-handed, I throw a ball right-handed and I bat right-handed. I didn't even know that you could bat a certain handed, <laughs> like there was right-handed and left-handed batting. I just you know, grab the bat and stepped up there the way it was comfortable, but and I found out, they're like, oh, okay, you bat right-handed, and I was like, wait, no, I'm left-handed. So that was interesting. Currently in high school? Okay. Uh oh. I would have assumed you're much older for some reason. That's cool. My husband's nephews just recently graduated from high school. We watched his graduation on uh, YouTube. They live streamed it. It was pretty cool. He graduated. He got like all these different honors, and I think he got two years of his college tuition paid for. It was like twelve thousand dollars. I was like, "Good night." Twelve thousand dollars only pays for two years of school. That is insane. I think he's going to. Um, Springfield. I think he's going to college in Springfield, Missouri, and he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be a chef. He's going to college to be a chef. I was like, that's pretty cool. I suppose I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, you can. I definitely wasn't saying it is a bad thing. There's just certain ways that people talk. I'm sure you've picked up on it before. It's like, especially when it's only through text, you can almost tell when some people are younger. And when some people are a little bit older, but I guess in some cases, obviously, it's not so obvious because I would have assumed that, I don't know, I would assume that you're maybe my age or maybe even a little bit older. That's not a bad thing. Well, obviously, you can tell by certain things some people say, like, um, if they're not allowed to do something or... If their mom is telling them to do something, they might be a little on the younger side. But, I mean, I guess you never know. Yes, grammar does tell a lot. That is for sure.
Well, I guess I'm probably done with these. There's not really a whole much, whole bunch more I want to do with them, but I do want to write some names by these. Sloth Boy recommended an animal video, and so did the Art Rat. I don't know if they're currently pursuing YouTube channels, but if they are, there you go. Okay, well, I think I'm done for now. It's been fun. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to watch me draw medio mediocre. <laughs> I'm going to try streaming again next Saturday if the weather allows it and if my internet connection allows it. Um... I'm not sure what time it'll be. I'll just have to play it by ear, I guess. I would almost do it on Sundays because I feel like a lot of the time most people have more to do on Saturday than they do on Sunday. But I know that Artistically Me streams on Sunday and so does Artified Life Studio. So I'm sure there will be a lot of people watching those channels. And I also like watching their streams as well sometimes too so I don't know if Sunday would be the best time uh, it's kind of like how I've heard some people say they don't like to post their videos on Fridays even though it's a really popular day to post videos because people are getting off school they're off work and they have the weekend but I know a lot of the big art youtubers like Bailey J and Mariah Elizabeth and Chloe Rose like a lot of them and Mira Byler post on Fridays so there's so many people spending their time watching those videos and other videos kind of get pushed to the side. So we'll see. I'll still be working out my schedule, but thanks for hanging out with me, Jean. And the one other person who I think is there because it says I have two viewers. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for spending some time with me. And I will see you in my video that I'll be posting next week sometime, Monday or Tuesday maybe. I have some collabs coming up, and then I hopefully will also see you again next time I stream on Saturday. Alright, see you guys later.